Okay, everybody, good morning um, and welcome to our Zoom service. This is the first Sunday in Lent, um, and I think we'll make a start. Um, just to say that we're using, in case uh, that I've caused some confusion, and I'm pretty good at causing confusion, we're using Rite 2 because of the three churches, two of them always, to my knowledge, use Rite 2 in Lent, one of them uses Rite 1. And rather than swap around the whole time and confuse everybody, including myself, we're going to stick to right two. But this morning, the Eucharistic prayer will be the first Eucharistic prayer from right one. And so I will remind you of the page um, at the appropriate time for those that wish to turn and follow. Um, OK, so welcome, everybody. And um, I'm going to ask Ray to begin for us. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sin. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is from Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, but never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow was seen in the clouds, 
I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all the flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your paths, O Lord, are love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenants. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul, my God. I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let your treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you I have trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions, Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Our second reading is from the first book of Peter. Christ suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water and baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hey. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts. And the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Some words from our second reading, 1 Peter, and baptism which this prefigured now saves you. Now, one of the main themes of uh, the first Sunday in Lent is the temptations of Jesus, which followed his baptism by John the Baptist. Whereas Matthew and Luke have quite a lot to say about the time of testing of Jesus in the wilderness, St. Mark mentions it only in passing. But nevertheless, it followed on from the baptism of Jesus. And so that is why the theme of three of our readings this morning is water and baptism. Our first reading is from the end of the story of Noah and the flood. Similar flood stories are found in other ancient religious traditions and debate continues and probably always will as to whether there is any historical foundation for the stories and whether in fact, when the stories speak of the whole world, they're actually speaking about flood experiences in the world known to the writers rather than a flood that consumes the whole world and even is, is higher than Everest. Those who search for the lost Ark of Noah seem to me like those who search for the lost Ark of the Temple. The concern for artifacts really misses the point. The Ark of the Temple, that wooden chest, represented the covenant. It is known as the Ark of the Covenant. And the story of Noah is important because it too ends with a covenant, sign of which was the rainbow. The important thing is the covenant and not an agreement made between two equal parties, but a unilateral covenant that God establishes. Death through water is replaced by God's assurance of commitment to the world, and it is to the world, all life. So it's no wonder that in our second reading from 1 Peter, the writer appeals to the story of Noah when he is talking about the saving significance of the death and resurrection of Jesus and says that baptism now saves. It saves because, says the writer, Christ suffered for sins once for all in order to bring you to God. In suffering and in death, it says Jesus proclaimed to the spirits in prison, a way of saying that the work of God in Jesus isn't confined to a particular time and place, but reaches all humanity, past, present, and to come. 
and that work sealed in the resurrection is described by Jesus at the Last Supper as the new covenant in his blood. The new covenant. Notice to the account of Jesus's baptism. Coming up out of the water. So like the story of Noah, there is a deluge. And now in the heavens, there is no rainbow, but the heavens are instead torn apart. A way of saying that the divine presence of God breaks out into time. And as in the story of Noah, the end of the flood waters uh, destruction is symbolized by a dove that did not return. So the creating, sustaining and redeeming work of God's spirit is symbolized by a dove who returns and abides. Baptism has become a sign of covenant. And it is never our covenant, though sometimes people speak of my baptismal covenant. As with all covenants, it is not an agreement between equals. It is God's unilateral covenant with us. The promise that by being deluged with water in the triune name, God pledges to us that he will save us. That is what our second reading, reading affirms. Just as in the story of Noah, eight people were saved through water, now God pledges to save us through water. In the gospel reading, the spirit descended in the form of the dove. But the same spirit then drove, note the force of the word there, drove, propelled Jesus into the wilderness where he was tempted by Satan, 40 days, same period of time, the flood in the story of Noah. It is of course a Semitic idiom for a period of time. It not, doesn't mean that it is exactly 40, just the same as I will say it's raining cats and dogs, it does not mean to say that there are cats and dogs dropping outside, it means it's pouring with rain hard. This is a, a, a Semitic idiom, a period of time, a long period of time, 40. So, uh, and it, Mark also says he was with the wild beasts. Possibly Mark was alluding to the fact that in Rome, we think Mark was writing in the 60s, and in Rome, the Emperor Nero had punished Christians by putting them in arena and being mauled and killed by ravenous animals, which he and others watched for amusement. Being baptized and following Jesus is not plain sailing. The spirit often propels us into places we would rather not be. Difficult times in our lives, difficulties in relationships, difficulties in work, difficulties and hardships and hurts of life. Even now, however well we might be coping in this time of pandemic, it is a form of being in the wilderness and always the possibility of that uh, virus is as dangerous as wild beasts. In all the difficulties that befall us in this mortal life, today's readings encourage us to take comfort in our baptism. God has made a covenant through baptism to save us. That is to bring us to full fellowship with the triune God. As 1 Peter puts it, Christ suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. Baptism is a pledge of God's loving covenant, in which, in all times of testing and doubt, is a sure pledge of refuge. In the baptismal service in the old books of common prayer, which derive from the work of Archbishop Cranmer at the Reformation, Cranmer spoke of us being baptized into the Ark of the Church, a place of refuge. 
Our baptism is a pledge that even when life seems as though we are in a wilderness surrounded by vicious beasts, God is with us. Amen. Thank you, Father Sphinx. And uh, this morning, I'd like to begin with turning to page 858. Uh, I was inspired through your sermon. to Let us, Deb and I, go through our holy baptism and our catechism. What is holy baptism? Holy baptism is the sacrament by which God adopts us as his children and makes as members of Christ's body, the church, and inheritors of the kingdom of God. What is the outward and visible sign in baptism? The outward and visible sign in baptism is water, in which the person is baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. What is the inward and spiritual grace in baptism? The inward and spiritual grace in baptism is union with Christ in his death and resurrection, birth into God's family, the church, forgiveness of sins, and new life in the Holy Spirit. What is required of us at baptism? It is required that we renounce Satan, repent of our sins, and accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Why then are infants baptized? Infants are baptized so that they can share citizenship in the covenant, membership in Christ, and redemption by God. How are the promises for infants made and carried out? Promises are made for them by their parents and sponsors who guarantee that the infants will be brought up within the church to know Christ and be able to follow him. I invite you to turn to page 358 and let us together affirm our beliefs in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth, earth of, of all that, that is seen and unseen. unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became, he became incarnate, incarnate from, from the, the Virgin Mary, Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. The fast life. Author is unknown, but I found this on the JesuitResource.com. Fast from judging others. Feast on Christ dwelling in them. Fast from fear of illness. Feast on the healing power of God. Fast from words that pollute, feast on speech that purifies. Fast from discontent, feast on gratitude. 
fast from anger, feast on patience. Fast from pessimism, feast on hope. Fast from negatives, feast on encouragement. Fast from bitterness, feast on forgiveness. Fast from self-concern, feast on compassion. Fast from suspicion, feast on truth. Fast from gossip, feast on purposeful, purposeful silence. Fast from problems that overwhelm, feast on prayer that sustains. Fast from anxiety, feast on faith. My story this morning is a funny one. Deb must have laughed for about five minutes, so hopefully you'll enjoy this one. A Protestant moves into a Catholic neighborhood. It's a pretty open-minded and welcoming community, and everyone gets along great. The first time an issue presents itself is when Lent rolls around. During Lent, the Catholics in the neighborhood all swear off red meat. Every day at lunch, however, as his neighbors were eating cold tuna sandwiches, the Protestant would grill himself a big juicy steak that could be smelled throughout the neighborhood. Several weeks into Lent, the Catholics meet after mass to discuss the issue. They didn't want to be unneighborly, but the smell was really driving them crazy. Then one comes up with the suggestion, since the Protestant moved to a Catholic community, maybe he'd be open to converting. While it wouldn't fix the problem that year, it would make next year's Lent go much more smoothly. After much debate, they agreed to bring the offer to the Protestant. To their surprise and delight, he is completely open to converting. He goes through the process and gets rebaptized as a Catholic. The entire neighborhood shows up for his confirmation, where the priest splashes him with the holy water while saying, you were born a Protestant, you were raised a Protestant, and now you are a Catholic. The next year goes smoothly, and the whole neighborhood gets along great. Then Lent rolls around again, and everyone is at home with their cold tuna sandwiches. A smell permeates the air. Charcoal, wood chips, steak. Confused, everyone rushes over to the convert's house. They find him standing over his grill, a juicy steak cooking away. He's splashing a slab, the slab of meat with beer, and the neighbors hear him speaking in a solemn voice. You were born a cow. You were raised a cow. You are now a fish. The prayers of the people will continue on page 387, form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. <clears throat> that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. <clears throat> may, may we, we also, also come, come to share in your heaven. heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and the needs of others. Continue prayers for all those who are suffering or have been um, afflicted with COVID. Um, Helen has asked that we um, send prayers to Scott Robinson's health. Um, we give thanks for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. Our 
Middlesex Area Cluster Ministry Network churches of St. James and St. Andrews and Emmanuel. Give blessings for them. And also blessings for those that are visiting with us today. We give thanks and we pray for our children and for our pets and for those that are expecting a new child. I'd like to say congratulations to all of our honor students in all of our areas. Um, we especially would like to congratulate Ellery Freeman for high honors. We give thanks for all that we are and all that we can be through Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we've asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to uh, invite you to um, join in the confession that you'll find on page 360 of the prayer book. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbour. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Those of you that have your elements of bread and wine, I invite you to take them now. And the Eucharistic prayer is the uh, prayer one from Holy Eucharist, Rite one, that you will find on page 333 of the prayer book. And there will be the proper preface for Lent. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right and our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. 
Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And in institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until he's coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy son hath commanded us to make. Having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee the most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and living sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this Holy Communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. 
Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May God, the Father, who does not despise the broken spirit, give to you a contrite heart. May Christ, who bore our sins in his body on the tree, heal you by his wounds. May the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, speak to you words of pardon and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Each victory will help you, some other to win. Pressing onward, dark passions subdue. Look ever to Jesus, he will carry you through. Ask the Savior to help you, comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to aid you, he will carry you through. Shun evil companions. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.